In this video, I want to look at explaining how to find the exact value of cos x and tan x if we're given sine of x. So we're told that sine x is 4 over 7. Now, the most succinct way of looking at this um, is to think that sine x, we know from Sokotoa, is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. And so from that, you can easily identify that 4 must be the opposite and 7 must be the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle. So we could draw ourselves a right-angled triangle. If that's my angle x, then this would be my opposite side of 4. That would be my hypotenuse of 7. That would allow me to find the adjacent, okay, using Pythagoras. So this side is the square root of 7 squared take away 4 squared. So the square root of 49 take away 16, okay, which is equal to the square root of 33. So this length is root 33. Now that I have an adjacent, I can then say, well, cos x is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so that's root 33 over 7. And tan x is opposite over adjacent, so 4 over root 33. And these are the exact values. Just doing it on your calculator won't give you the same result. Um, it will actually, because the calculator can't deal with it, it will give you uh, a decimal equivalent, okay? But we want the exact uh, number. So we want something including the third. Now, this is all well and good, but in actual fact, this doesn't give you the whole story. Um, because essentially, um, all this is doing is giving us one possible answer. In actual fact, there are two. And that comes from the fact that sine and cosine are periodic. Okay? It's to do with their graphs, and we'll be looking at the graphs later in this section. Also later in this section, from um, the unit circle, we get uh, a trig identity, which says that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So we will find out where that comes from later in this section. Now, if you knew what sine x was, that's the 4 sevenths, then we would have 4 sevenths squared plus cos squared equals 1. So cos squared is 1 minus 4 squared over 7 squared, so 16 over 49. And then cosine will be the square root of that. However, when we take a square root, we should bring in a plus minus, okay? So, in actual fact, this isn't uh, just the positive, okay? This isn't just the positive. We're actually square rooting and getting a negative answer as well. So, we get exactly the same thing as we had up here, root 33 over 7. But instead, we've got plus or minus root 33. Oh, sorry. Root 33 over 7. OK? That's coming from solving this identity. Um, so there are actually two solutions to cosine. And subsequently, with another trig identity that we learn later on, um, which is tan x is sine x over cos x, if you know what sine x is and you know what cos x is, which we do, sine x is 4 over 7, and cos x is this, plus or minus root 33 over 7, that means tan x is plus or minus 4 over root 33 not just the positive 
4 over root 33. Okay? Now, the reason why this is happening is down to the fact of what that angle is. Okay? And it is dependent on the size of that angle. So, we might not be looking at an angle that is acute, for example, or obtuse. It could be a reflex angle. And in that case, we can't really draw a triangle that includes it. Okay? So, there is this problem uh, stemming from this. But you will be able to get an exact value for cos x and tan x using this triangle method. And I would really suggest you learn how to do this. Um, and once you're happy with where these identities have come from, then you can utilise that fact in later problems.